Software. Hello again, this is Foghorn with another installment of Flight School Academics for this, the 10th of February, 2954, 2024, if you're stuck in the past. This presentation is part of an ongoing series of academics for the members of the Aurora Republic, the premier role-playing organization in Star Citizen. If you are new to the Aurora Republic or visiting for the first time, let me start by saying welcome. Glad to have you with us. Love to hear more from you if you're interested in hearing more from us. We are a lawful good organization focused on role-play exploration and social interaction and are currently active in recruiting on Spectrum and Gilded. Tonight, we are going over uh, basic aviation concepts. So, of course, uh, basic aviation 100 Bravo, basic aviation concepts, part of the undergraduate pilot training syllabus, uh, basic aviation module uh, to get your UPT certification uh, should be fairly quick. Uh, we've done this before, but it's the new year, so time to go through our standard training uh, uh, regimen starting from the beginning. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about the six degrees of freedom that you fly in at all times, uh, the intelligent flight control system, IFCS modes, um, and then a quick uh, flight demo, and then just touch a little bit on traffic patterns um, just for a little bit of familiarity. All right, so flying fundamentals, six off and uh, IFCS. So uh, the six degree of freedom, um, if you give yourself three axes through these uh, aerospace vehicle, uh, X being the forward back axis, Y being the left right axis, and Z being the uh, up and down axis, then your six degrees of freedom are um, three transitional, uh, translational axes and three rotational axes around those three axes we spoke of. So if you translate along those axes, along the X axis is surge. So you surge forward and backwards. If you go left and right along the Y axis, that is called sway. So you sway left and right. And then up and down along the Z axis is called heave. So you heave up and heave down. Those are the three translational degrees of freedom. The three rotational degrees of freedom are known as pitch, uh, roll pitch and yaw. Um, if you rotate around the X axis, then that is roll. If you rotate around the Y axis, that is pitch and roll around the Z axis, that is yaw. You can see in that wonderful little diagram there um, with the Mustang in the middle. Um, the in Star Citizen, our spacecraft, how it's called the Intelligent Flight Control System or IFCS. It provides many different uh, automated functions. Um, some of the Default key binds uh, are there on the screen, as you can see. So um, and November brings your gear up and down uh, as far as a default on the keyboard. Um, and then uh, auto land if you long hold and that will uh, auto land once you are within a reasonable position over top of a landable surface such as landing pad uh, or hangar. Um, you can couple and decouple and we'll talk more to the, what that means in a moment. Um, with left alt and C, that's a change from what a lot of people are probably used to over the years. It's not a recent one. It was a, pa a couple patches ago that they changed it from just Charlie to left alt and Charlie. But now you have to hold the left alt and Charlie to couple and decouple if you're using mouse keyboard. Um, coupled means that the IFCS is delivering a commanded velocity, um, which means that when you are commanding, uh, say, if you're using mouse and keyboard, when you're holding W to fly forward, to thrust forwards, to surge, um, then it will go to whatever the commanded velocity is. When you let go of that input, you are therefore now commanding zero velocity, and the IFCS will counter thrust back to a stop because you are commanding zero velocity, so it's giving you what you're asking for. Uh, if you want to not have to hold uh, W the entire time, then you can use cruise, uh, which is just uh, le the letter C for cruise, and that will maintain whatever the speed limiter is setting uh, in the forward flight, in other words, surge. And you can control that uh, speed limiter via your uh, mouse wheel um, when you're seated in a cockpit. So uh, if you are in decoupled mode by using left alt and C, then the I IFCS changes to where it's deliver delivering a commanded acceleration instead of a commanded velocity. That means that when you are thrusting in a specific direction, again, hitting W to thrust surge forward, the IFCS will give that acceleration and continue accelerating the velocity up until it reaches the speed limiter, if you have a speed limiter engaged, or uh, to whatever the maximum um, allowable 
uh, speed is in programmed into the IFCS. Um, when you let go, it you are now commanding zero acceleration, which means that the spacecraft will continue to move at whatever its current speed is in the direction it's currently uh, uh, it's it's uh, velocity vector is currently pointing, and it will continue that until you command another acceleration. So if you want to slow down or stop, you have to now hit the S key and uh, thrust in the opposite direction to decelerate yourself down to whatever uh, velocity it is you want. That's the uh, basic difference between coupled and decoupled. It's what what is the IFCS actually commanding? Is it, is it are you commanding a velocity and the IFCS is giving you that, or are you commanding uh, an acceleration and the IFCS is giving you that? So for decoupled maneuvering, there's a couple of little te techniques. Uh, of course, again, you go hit left alt and C to get in there. You'll see the coupled uh, light in the lower left outer portion of your heads up display will um, will go from being highlighted to being dark. Meaning you are now decoupled. Um, so if you've never done any decoupled maneuvering before, uh, a suggested beginner technique is just to do axial thrust or in other words, just thrust in only one axis at a time, the old stop and go technique. So you see where it is you want to get to. You fix X, Y, and Z one at a time through single axis thrusts to uh, move yourself over to where you want and then counter thrust to stop um, to stop your velocity to arrest your movement. Then as you uh, build that skill and get better, then, of course, um, you can move on to uh, more advanced techniques of of thrusting in multiple axes simultaneously and using off axis thrust techniques and to maneuver yourself around in a much more fluid manner without having to do one axis at a time and do the old stop and go. So that's uh, ultimately what we're skill challenge. We're going to be trying tonight is decoupled landings, um, and we will give that a shot. All right, so flight demo. Uh, I'm going to show you. Spaceships. Pardon? <laughs> I'm going to need spaceships. <laughs> okay. Um, for uh, the flight demo that I'm going to do here in a moment, showing you uh, these different uh, degrees of freedom and all of that sort of stuff, then uh, what I want you to pay special attention is to the velocity vector. Um, and the total velocity indicator. The TVI is in the lower left corner of the inside portion of the HUD, and the velocity vector will look like a pair of carrots side by side. That'll either be pointing at each other or pointing away from each other, depending on whether we're going in the direction of that uh, carrot or if we're going opposite to it. So um, that's the one that's blinking right there. That's the uh, velocity vector or the flight path marker, in other words. And that's the, the TVI or total velocity indicator down in the lower left. Oop. Okay, so first get over. Oop. And uh, only going to be able to uh, see the demo over on uh, Twitch. Got to go right over here like that. There we go. All right, so I'm in uh, Arena Commander free, free Flight. Go spawning in. Let me do this real quick. I like that. And then I will change what I am streaming over in Gilded over to full screen. Per there we go. Okay. So let me go ahead and spawn in here in Arena Commander, uh, free flight, um, offline. Um, and as you can see, here I am uh, at. Security post, Aria. Okay, good. Head tracking is working. So, I'm going to stop right here so that you can use the station. 
make sure I'm here on the, uh, the sunlit side so you can use the station as a reference. Okay, uh, first, as you'll see, as I center up my head here, that the flight path marker, I am wiggling back and forth in front of the um, in front of the uh, gun cross. You'll see how the two carrots are pointed towards each other, which means we are headed from your eyeball through that pair of carrots, is that the actual direction of our velocity. Um, I'm in coupled mode, so the second I let go of uh, my input, you'll notice that the ship came to a stop because uh, we're in coupled and that the uh, flight, path or flight path marker basically disappeared uh, once my velocity hit zero. Um, I'm going to fly backwards now, and again, I'm going to wiggle the flight path marker back and forth in front of the gun cross, and you'll notice that the carrot is now, two carrots are now uh, opposite to each other. And which means we're flying backwards from that line on the monitor through my eyeball uh, backwards. Okay, same thing there. Okay, so six degrees of freedom. We have the three axes and we can surge forward or surge back. You'll see the flight path marker move there. Uh, if we are going to sway left or right, I'm going to sway to the right and I'm going to turn my head and as you can see my flight, my flight path marker is over there to the right as we slide to the right. And then I can push over here and we can go back and slide back to the left. Okay. Same thing as if I heave up, notice the flight path marker goes up there. If I heave down, it should present itself down there by my feet. So those surge, sway, and heave, those are your three translational axes. Uh, if I roll, or excuse me, if I rotate around the x-axis, which is the one that goes longitudinally out the front of the spacecraft, you'll notice that is roll. We can roll left, roll right. Uh, and if we go around the Y axis, which is the one that goes left to right through the wings, then um, that is called pitch. You'll notice it pitch all the way around. Uh, we're just sitting still, so we're not uh, we're not actually moving. We're just rotating in space. And then, of course, if we rotate around the Z axis, which is the one that goes uh, up and down through the center of the spacecraft, then um, you'll notice that we just basically yaw left and right. And if you just keep going in one direction and all the way around, it'll eventually uh, complete the circle. So again, uh, because I'm in uh, coupled, if I thrust forward and then let go, you'll notice that come to a stop. Uh, same thing if I go backwards here. Now, if I let go, boop, the uh, IFCS counter thrusts to give the velocity that I was commanded. But now I am going to go into decoupled. And now you'll notice I'll go backwards first. So you now you notice that as I thrust backwards at about 50 50 meters per second, that uh, now I have my literally have my hands off the controls and notice that I just sit here and maintain 50 without doing anything. Now I'm going to push forward thrust. And so I command a little bit of forward acceleration, which slows my arrests, my backward movement and then accelerates me forward. Can get up to say 113 and I'm just letting off the controls and I just fly back. Now if I thrust aft to slow myself down, I have to actually do the accelerating and the decelerating. And it doesn't doesn't matter what axis this is in. So I can add in some right, thrust to the right and it moves us right. We will just keep floating in that direction forever. And if I decide to add forward thrust in a single axis, you'll notice that that flight path marker will move as the forward thrusters change our velocity vector. I can change the nose again without adding any thrust. And then if I sit here and add the thrust in, you'll notice that the velocity vector eventually comes around the corner as the uh, thrust, as the forward thrust overcomes the uh, velocity, the direction of the velocity. So now if I go this one, I want to stop. I have to counter thrust. So if I'm sliding right, I need to thrust left. It looks like forward a little bit because I'm floating away. Basically zero wise that movement. There we go. I'm pretty close to a stop. 
So I'm still doing 16 meters per second. Be able to move this straight in front of. If I can get myself to a dead stop. There we go. That was done completely by hand without uh, using the IFCS. So we'll go ahead and turn that. Okay. <clears throat> Over on the left side, you have your uh, thrust limiter. Your, excuse me, your speed limiter, which uh, you'll see is. Excuse me, I had to cough there. Um, you'll see is that uh, square box on the velocity scale, and you'll notice that it moves up and down with your scroll wheel if you're using keyboard and mouse. And even if you are in decoupled, I'm in decoupled again. I'm going to put it down fairly low. When you thrust, it'll only take you up to that velocity limiter, even though you're in decoupled mode. So that way you can control when you're doing decoupled landings or any of the like. You can, you can help keep yourself from getting out of control by moving your velocity limiter down so that the max speed that it'll allow you to accelerate yourself to uh, has a limit to it. Obviously, if I put the limiter up high, now I'm just half thrusting to, in theory, to fly away. All the way up to, that's probably what, 400 ish, 380. Now you notice I'm flying away pretty fast. And if I change that velocity, even though I'm in decoupled, I'm not putting in any thrusts, it will counter thrust only to get me down to where that velocity limiter is. And then go back to flying. Now I put in forward thrust. Uh, and now it's. Notice that it goes, it, it still limits, uh, if the velocity limiter is turned on, then it will still limit uh, your velocity even when you're in couple. And if I kick back into coupled, now you'll see without any input right here, it counter thrust to bring me back to stop. So most people will fly around in coupled normally, only kind of use decoupled in certain situations. Um, but we are going to be practicing some decoupled landings. So we'll get ourselves going. Make sure our gear is down. Okay, I'm going to use pad five right here, floating out here, Arena Commander, and decoupled. Now you'll see, we've got our thrust going on. Now you have to move that flight limiter, or excuse me, use the flight path marker, put it to where you want, and make small adjustments to get things under control. I wonder if they ever fixed the gravity on these pads, considering this is like a new map for Arena Command. Doesn't look like they did. Looks like they just left the same broken pads. They just ported them over. And see if I can get this to stick. Some aircraft engineer, aircraft carrier engineer, looking at this and saying, Are you insane? All these obstacles? Yeah. Hmm. All right. So it doesn't look like they fixed the gravity on the... on the uh, landing pads. I wonder if they did over on... Uh, they did over on the station proper. Give that a try. Back. Go try the pads on the actual station, see if they're any better. And we're crashing into big things. Oh, apparently I hit my tail on something. There's a set. roof above that. Now nah, there's some bits and bobs that are hanging down. Mm -hmm. Try Try pads. You know what? We'll just do it on Korea's main pads. 
because that looks like that looks like they got good gravity here and they're not slick. There we go. Okay, cool. Now let me get myself back over to the presentation. Just a sec, folks. Got to re-swap. Re-swap the thing. There we go. Of course. Give me a error code when I try to... <sighs> All right. One more time. Stupid gilded is pain in the butt. How about now? <laughs> it's popping in and out like a ping pong ball. Yeah, it won't let me it won't let me stream anymore, you guys. There we go. Finally. Okay. Uh Three. now to wrap things up. Um, we'll just go ahead and touch uh, typical traffic patterns real quick, uh, just for fam. Um, not that folks really use them much in Star Citizen, but um, basically the type of uh, approaches and departures that we use in Star Citizen is what's called diverse approaches or diver diverse departures, which is based off the see and avoid concept, which means you just take off, look around outside, don't hit any other airplanes, fly off where you want to go in the most expedient fashion, avoiding it's all completely on you, the pilot, to avoid not only to see and avoid other aircraft and other traffic and other obstacles, but to also avoid any, say, like restricted areas that you're not allowed to be in, any of that stuff. All of, when you're doing diverse departures uh, and diverse approaches, all of the onus is on the pilot. Um, so you're not required to fly any traffic patterns in or out. It is the most efficient, but it's also uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of traffic in an area before um, diverse departures start becoming problematic. Um, and it also assumes that you're flying in what we call VMC visual meteorological conditions, which means you can actually see to do this. You have to be able to, see, you can't see and avoid if you can't see. So, um, uh, the next thing up when traffic and or weather starts becoming problematic, um, uh, for, for doing diverse departures or diverse approaches, then next comes the, uh, actual traffic patterns. The first and easiest of those is a straight in approach, which will have a final approach fix at a known distance, usually over top of a visual ground reference point. Um, so say one kilometer here in Star Citizen out from the threshold of your point of intended landing, where you'd come over at a fairly slow known speed, like say something like 100 meters per second, that all spacecraft are capable of doing so that uh, everybody flies the approach the exact same way. Um, you'd cross that uh, final approach fix, make your radio call with your call sign, final approach fix, gear down and full stop to air traffic control. Uh, at that point, you would bunt over uh, off from flying level if you're assuming you're over top of the ground. And, dude, you okay? Um, yeah. Drink yeah, my we're, cup we're, of tea. We're, we're, we're streaming, dude. Can you, can you mute? Okay, um, at which point, uh, at the final approach fix, after you make your call and your gear down call, that's where you'd uh, bunt over, pick up your uh, glide slope to your threshold uh, of intended landing, get aligned, um, start your descent, make your gear call, check your gear, um, and start a slow reduction of speed so that you're coming over the threshold um, with landing speed, landing uh, attitude, and ready to touch down. The uh, next step up from that um, is a box pattern. Um, you'll notice that the final approach of the box pattern is identical to a straight in approach. It's just a box pattern is just added on to what's basically already a straight in. But um, it's good to know that know these terms. So uh, if you're looking around the a box pattern around your uh, runway or landing pad or hangar, 
then um going uh pat once you're past your point of intended landing if you're having to fly around the pattern that is actually called upwind um but you turn crosswind is after your point of landing if that's where you're entering downwind is when you're going opposite direction out of the side you turn left you turn base uh 90 degrees to that final uh, approach and then you turn to be outside of the final approach fix to cross over it and basically you fly fly final just the exact same way you would do um on a straight in approach there are many different places you can uh, enter into the box pattern um and the box pattern is defined as either being left or right handed depending on which way you turn so the turns define which way the traffic is so if they say uh you know left it's left hand traffic for runway x then that means you're going to be making left turns all the way around the box a right hand traffic pattern is no different than a left hand traffic pattern except for you just simply flipped over in mirror image to turning all right um standard points that you would call uh, as far as reporting points you're entering on a 45 to outside downwind you use your call sign entering left downwind um, and you do put the direction of the of the box uh, in the position call. So when you turn base, it would be call sign left base if you're going left, right base if you're going right. And then when you uh, get to the point that you're turning in for final, you just say uh, your call sign, final gear down, and full stop. Um, some standards that I've come up with based on Star Citizen would be assuming if we're over ground that uh, pattern altitude would be 300 meters AGL, uh, which is pretty typical of what uh you'd be in real life with using a thousand foot pattern um 100 uh, meters per second pattern speed which is pretty much all spacecraft i believe in the inventory so far are capable of doing at least a, at least 100 meters per second and doing keeping three g's in the turn so that basically everybody's flying the same uh size patterns all right that wraps up this installment of academics of foghorn i hope you found it interesting and helpful if you have any questions i didn't answer please feel free to contact me via email gilded spectrum or of course the comment section below if you're watching this later i'll answer it to the best of my ability and as soon as i see it please hit those follows and subscribe buttons as appropriate comment your comments in the comments we're always striving to improve our content if you're interested in finding out more information about the aurora public that we can find it out on our bespoke website which is at aurorarepublic.space or of course on our less bespoke spectrum at uh, robertspaceindustries.com slash org slash Aurora Rep. See you next time. Foghorn signing off. Wishing a very pleasant remaining of your morning, afternoon, and or evening. Thank you so very much for watching.